Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, let's pick up on what Thursday's local election results in England mean for the Conservatives. They were performing something of a victory lap, thanks to some good results in parts of the country, including the Midlands and avoiding a wipeout in some parts of London. Is that the real picture, though? We're joined now by the Conservative Vice Chairman for London, Paul Scully. Welcome. Um, it wasn't really a great performance in London, was it? Labour actually got their best result in London since 1971, and that was at your expense. Well, funny enough, I was just on my way in, I was listening to Paul Richards, the former Labour special advisor, and when he was being quizzed on radio about where that 1971 figure came from, and he couldn't answer it, he did, said basically it was just something made up to feel, make people feel better for themselves. Yes, but he's, he's not exactly a fan of the Corbyn leadership, this is, is very he? True. So he would this is that. very true. Look, I think we went in um, uh, thinking these were going to be a really difficult set of elections for us, because we're eight years into a conservative and Conservative-led government. Uh, when you're looking at the Labour, last Labour government that lost 4,000 uh, councillors by this stage um, in, in, in their um, administration, I think you know we, we, we can be proud of what we did in terms of talking about focusing on the local issues, which is going to affect people for the next four years. But London's starting to look like a really significant problem for you, isn't it? So Justine Greening said, we need to be really careful. We don't see the avoidance of a wipeout in London as some kind of triumph. And that's the worry, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's no triumph. This is not a triumph for us. This is part of a process. There's no doubt, and this is why, you know, as Vice Chairman for London, my job for the next, I'm not just Vice Chairman for the London elections, is to make sure that our message, that we're getting across our positive um, uh, moves to meet people's aspirations in London, because that's why people tend to move into London from other parts of the country and other parts of the world, is for opportunity, and we've got to make sure we match that. And there's a lot of Remain voters in London as well. We had Anna Subri on the programme earlier, and she says she's worried that the Conservatives are going to lose votes because elections are won from the centre, and that if you pursue a Brexit that involves leaving the single market, the customs union, that people will perceive that as a, a, a Brexit too far for them, and you will lose votes. She's right that elections are won from the centre, but in terms of Brexit, what we've got to make sure, that I don't think any of the votes cast last Thursday are going to have any effect on Brexit whatsoever, and that worries me about some of the campaigns from the ah, other but The party. question is whether the votes cast last Thursday have, have Im impact on your Brexit policy. N well, I don't think they will, uh, but, but I think because Brexit policy will, be, will come through negotiation, will come through uh, compromise, uh, and it will come through working with, with the EU, with Cabinet, with Parliament, and making sure that, we, we, that everybody's voice is heard. But Anna Subri also said that what the Prime Minister had to do was see off and sort out the ideologues who are blighting the party. Um, you're an eager Brexiteer. Was she talking about you? Uh, I don't think so. I've talked about, I've talked about pragmatism. I, I think the, the point is that um, having these sort of debates and just uh, airing dirty laundry without any sense of um, uh, um, solution is not particularly helpful from either side, frankly. We've got to make sure that we have a Brexit that works for everybody. Um, now, there is an issue in Pendle, not in London, but a council that is now a Conservative council. But that's because a council there who had been suspended um, after sharing a racist joke on Facebook was reinstated as a Conservative member, and then that one seat magically meant you had control of Pendle Council. When was she actually allowed back into the Conservative Party? Uh, my understanding is that she, uh, her suspension was finished in November 17. So she had a... Um, uh, a suspension action was taken immediately at a local level. Um, the, the suspension was uh, finished in November 17, and she'd had some additional uh, diversity training as well. You know, the, so it's the case closed as far as you're concerned. She's now a full member of the Conservative Party, and she's welcome. As in the far party. as I understand from the local solution, that is the case. But you know, clearly, if anybody holds the views that were espoused in, in, in what she shared, they are totally unacceptable views. So I'm not privy to what's, what the discussions that were going on at a local level in Pendle. But, but what now, you're not the only person to have said that this morning, that if she holds those views, there are views that aren't welcome in the Conservative Party. And well, that sounds as though it's some kind of code for reopening and reinvestigating this, because the local party no, maybe didn't do it properly? No, I only say that because, uh, because, as I say, I don't have full details here in London. So um, the, you know, the, the, uh, the first that I actually saw the, the, um, what was shared 
was this morning. So, uh, from, from, and, and this was a few months ago. And as I say, there's a lot of happened since then in terms of the fact that she was suspended. We acted very quickly. We've in, since then um, brought in a code of conduct, which the Labour Party refused to uh, um, to reflect in their own approach. To, well, this is the, to, to the, such the respect pledge that Brandon Lewis brought in, and yet you had. 12 people who were selected to stand for uh, as councillors in these elections um, who were suspended from the party for variously making anti-Semitic, anti-Islamic um, anti or racist uh, statements on Twitter and on social media. Yeah, but if they're brought back into the party, they will be brought back for a reason. They will be brought back mainly either because they... Uh, uh, it has been investigated and there's nothing to, to be found or they've uh, apologized and it's clear that they that their views have changed or it was, it was, it's careless you know we won't just let people back in for the sake of it not for winning a council not for uh, for any other reason we've got to stamp out racism Don does that sound as though uh, the, the conservative party are they're always saying that labor need to take anti-semitism mm. seriously is the boot on the other foot here yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm astounded by what I'm hearing. I mean, the Muslim Council of Britain have called for an inquiry into, into endemic Islamophobia in the Conservative Party. We saw countless, you know, uh, Conservative councillors being pulled up for anti-Semitism, for racism, for sexism and all sorts. I think that, you know, I think that everybody who is anti-Semitic in the Labour Party needs to be kicked out, including Ken Livingstone. But I think the Conservatives need to get their own house in order as well. We've, got, we've now got an independent process, so it's actually as soon as um, an allegation comes in, it will be taken. There was, there was nobody in Conservative Central Office that would be looking at. It's an independent uh, group of people that will look at that and take action as soon as possible. But will you listen to the Muslim Council of Britain and have an inquiry into Islamophobia in your party? We'll always listen to the Muslim Council of Britain and we'll always listen to, to, to any uh, representative organisation. What we do need to do, and I've spent a lot of my three years in Parliament doing, is, is reaching out to... Uh, uh, to uh, people from all faiths and, and, uh, and all backgrounds. And that's especially true, as we were saying before, in London. I mean, Melanie, this obviously is uh, a, a, a starting to brew in the Conservative Party at the time when there has been uh, an ongoing issue with anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. Is this a wider problem throughout the whole of British politics? I think it's a very wide problem, um, but I think it's particularly concentrated on the progressive side of politics, not just in the Labour Party, not just in the Corbyn circle, it's not just in the Labour Party, it's on the left, it's the Lib Dems as well. Um, there's clearly anti-Semitism and racism in all parties, and I'm sure the Conservative Party is no exception. But the bulk of it, the bulk of the anti-Semitism, is endemic now, on the left. And but but the no, accusation now is, 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 is no Islamophobia is um, running through the Conservative Party. The accusation of Islamophobia covers legitimate criticisms of the Muslim community. Any criticism of the Muslim community is considered Islamophobic. There is no equation between Islamophobia, which is used as a means of shutting down legitimate criticism of the Muslim community, and anti-Semitism, for which there is never any excuse at all. Anti-Semitism is not just a form of racism. It is a unique derangement. It is based entirely on lies and demonization. The same cannot be said of, of, of what is considered I can't Islamophobia. I believe claiming that there can be uh, you know, grounds for Islamophobia. That's obscene. I didn't say there's grounds for Islamophobia. I said the term Islamophobia itself is used to cover legitimate criticism of, 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 of Muslims or the Muslim okay. community. Tom, when, there are, there's clearly prejudice against Muslims. There's clearly prejudice against Hindus, against Sikhs. There's clearly prejudice against everybody. The term Islamophobia is used as a means of shutting down legitimate debate. We're in danger of getting into an entirely different argument here. Um, Tom, this is something all of the parties need to take a grip of. Yeah, it is, and there is extremism in all parties. Uh, personally, I think we've seen a lot more anti-Semitism accusations on the hard left than we have accusations of Islamophobia uh, on, on the right. So I think Labour do have a bigger problem. What will be interesting for the Tories, though, if they are now consuming this huge uh, UKIP vote, which is, by and large, a, a little bit more of a right-wing vote, they will have, a, a, I think, probably a greater problem, as perhaps maybe former UKIP people, possibly even former BNP people, do start to infiltrate because there is no other place for the right to go than the Tories. OK, well, thank you all very much for coming in to today. Paul Scully, thanks for coming in to talk to us. Tom Newton-Dunn, Melanie Phillips-Dawn, thank you all for being part of the show today. That's it for us. Yeah.